Hi all, welcome to the next episode. Um, sorry we haven't had any content for a little while. We've been exceptionally busy because we're about to launch four new websites. Plus we've had a few people sign up to our mentorship, so this took up a lot of our time. And then on top of that, we've got our, our main website that we're managing. But a lot of our resources are now focusing on our, our new project projects. So today we're really going to focus on you know, if you're building up your Shopify, like adding products and giving you insight into that. We've looked at, you know, building your brand and targeting suppliers. So if you were going along with our structure now, you would be at the point where you've got Shopify and you want to start adding products. And Shopify has got various different parts, so we'll, we'll make a few different videos within Shopify. Um, but this particular one, we're going to focus really on adding products and also collections. So the main thing, the reason for this image here is that with Shopify, everything around it in terms of your structure, your headings, uh, your research and look at your competitors, your content, a lot of that benefits you in terms of SEO uh, and it's good to take that into consideration when building the website so that you benefit from all the work that you're doing just now. It does mean that it'll take longer to add products and, uh, and develop that, but you should see more benefits from it in the long term. So first of all, before we start adding the products, now that you've got your brand and everything, if you haven't already already got a domain, domain then you need to get your domain. And, and we would recommend to go to GoDaddy because it's very easy to integrate within Shopify. So as an example, just search the domain, find the domain you want, and then purchase it. Um, you'll see that there is now things like .shop and .store, so you might not want to go for a .co.uk domain or a .com. You might want to go for one of these new ones. Um, the only thing I would say is that people are used to writing .com and .co.uk. Um, so that's slightly different in terms of somebody writing .shop. It's, it's probably not something that most people have done. So that's the only thing I would take into consideration when looking at one of those domains. So then once you've got the domain, it's very easy to connect it to Shopify. You log into Shopify, go to the domain section, type in the domain like GoDaddy and, and it then synchronizes and connects. There isn't really much more to it than that, like it is really, really simple. And that's why we'd recommend to go to GoDaddy. So once the domain's connected, um, the next thing is to look at a potential theme. Now it does come with a free theme, but to differentiate and to stand out, we would suggest yeah, looking at something different and, and adding some customization to it. Um, now going back to like we, we mentioned before about creating a story and looking at your brand and your design and everything, that should all be taken into consideration when picking a theme. So the way that you've decided to design your brand, when you start looking for a theme, these are things that you should be thinking of. So when you go into Shopify themes, there's lots to go in here and we can't really go through them all, but you can uh, sort them by different categories and industries and then look for something that you think looks that suits yourself. Also take into consideration how many products you're going to have. Are you going to have like thousands? Are you going to have 50, 100, 500? And then look for a theme that's relative to the volume of products that you're looking at. If you're unsure and you've got like a couple of hundred products, and you think you may scale, end up scaling up to a couple of thousand, then that's also something to take into consideration when looking at the theme. So once you've got the theme and you've installed it, all you need to do is basically go into your navigation and publish the theme. And then that, that's added into your actual um, uh, Shopify. Again, the options that you'll see in your theme will be different depending on what the theme is. So we're not really going to go into that. But if there is specific areas that you're struggling with or need help, ask in the comments below and we can see we can answer for you. Plus, on top of that, we do have the one-on-one -on -one mentoring um, from our website where we can give you more direct support. Um, within Shopify itself, you'll see in the uh, settings, there's lots of settings here and, and we will cover different things at different points. But even just read through all the different settings just to get you uh, familiarize yourself with them because th there's a lot of them are very straightforward, to be honest. So before we add products, one of the things I wanted to highlight was for you to think about your navigation in terms of the structure, like how you're going to navigate from the home page to your products. Now from the advertising, a lot of people will drive and they'll land straight on the product page. 
but you also have to think for people who come to the home page, how will they be navigated? And then also people that are on the product page, if they then go somewhere else, how will the navigation work for them? Is it going to be from like a top-down navigation? Or are you going to have a graphical navigation? So that's something to take into consideration. And what we've done here is shown you like, so the website's the top part, then you go down to a room, and then you go down to a product. Um, it might be that you go from the website straight to product, you know, so you have, have one less step in the navigation process. But that's something to think about, especially when you're going to start making your collections. So in terms of your products, we wanted to just give you some information about your product title. Um, because that is important, especially when you're advertising and putting into Google Shopping, the relevance of the information that picks up from there. Also as well for SEO purposes. Um, but I'll, in the initial points, you're going to be driving traffic through advertising. So the product title, which is the part we've highlighted in green, the first 70 to 90 characters, including spaces, are, are shown on the ad. Maximum is 150. But you really want to keep the, the main keywords within the first 70 to 90 characters. We also, whether um, if there's depending on the materials of the products, it's useful to add those materials into the title as well. If you look at the purple section here. So if it's a single material, like the, the fabric or leather, or you, you can have a primary material and a secondary material. So if it's mainly made of like, like a leather sofa, but it's got wood and a wooden frame, then you can put like leather slash wood. Um, so you can have multiple um, materials within the title. So if we go to the yellow section. This is an example where Mark Harris is the brand, Bretoli is the collection, Extending White Ceramic Dining Table is the, uh, the product, but it's also got in within that part the material and the color. And then it's got a secondary color, which is the white legs, and then the size. So the importance here is the brand name, then the collection name. And this particular one, the, the product color, and that's all kind of mixed in together. So when Google does its search, it's going to pick up the brand and the collection as the key points. And this all comes down to the way that you're going to advertise and drive traffic. So the main thing you're focusing on is driving traffic through the brand and the collection. So you're trying to catch low hanging fruit to drive to the website. Then that's the most important part for you. If we go to down to the blue section, this is this is flipping this slightly. So if you're putting the, the onus on the actual product, so we're going with extending white ceramic dining table, white legs, 180 to 220. And then I put Mark Harris Bertoli in yellow because there's like three different ways you can do it. One is you put Mark Harris Bertoli at the end. So you've still got the brand name and the collection in the title, but you're putting more emphasis on the actual product and the color and the materials so that you're catching people who's looking for ceramic dining tables, the ceramic dining tables, rather than people who are looking for the Mark Harris Bertoli. And then the third way would be to actually remove Mark Harris Bertoli and just have an extending white ceramic dining table, white legs, 180 to 220. One of the things that we found is that, especially if you want to white label something, is by removing that brand, you can make a higher margin. Because when someone comes to your website and they find the white ceramic dining table, if they go into Google and search white ceramic dining table, it's very unlikely they're going to find the same one that you've got. They possibly will, but a lot of people won't. So by removing the Mark Harris and the Bertoli, it helps eliminate some of that competition. But these are things you've got to consider in terms of how you're structuring it. We can give more advice on this in our one-to-one -one mentoring if you need support in relation to that. Um, but that part there will come down to how you want to drive traffic to your website, how much margin you want to make, what the competition is like, and then also you may have a product that you can't white label, that you can you have to tell the brand. And if all the importance is on the brand, then it would be the yellow one that you would look at, basically. So now that we're going to add in the actual product part, um, again, just showing for the information there, we've got the brand name, the collection, the color, material up at the top. Once you get into the actual description, the header one's similar to the title. It's got a lot of emphasis there, so you want your main title repeating those kind of keywords. I would suggest to change it up slightly so that it, it, it's not being so repetitive, but you want to use similar words within that. Next is like the body description, and in the body description, again, it gives you a chance to talk about the product. So you'll see this example that we've given here, 
the unique choice of dining table and we've put dining table in bold to emphasize that's a key word within that description same with stainless steel bases and black powder coat as well as rectangle top these are all key words that potentially may get picked up in the, in the, in the seo search and then you can have another header, header 2 title, and use that for important features and colours or materials. So you could write here, like the colour white, you know, material, ceramic. And again, emphasise that there as well. And then continue with a further description. Down into where you actually organise it, where you've got like the actual type, vendor and collections. For the type, we would keep this simple, like I wouldn't overcomplicate this, so that all your products are falling under the same type that's relevant to it. The vendor name is obviously your, your brand name, but if you're white labeling that, that will be a white label brand. And then your collection is the collection it's linked into. So if it's like a sofa collection, it links into sofas. As, far as you further go down in the product page, you've then got an SKU and barcode. Now the barcode is important, especially when it comes to advertising. However, you can still advertise without the barcode. Um, and there is some brands that don't give you barcodes, but if you do get the barcode, then I would use it. If with the SKU, again, you want to use that, but you're going to be then also be deciding brand versus non-brand. If you're going for non-brand, you don't want to use the supplier's SKU. You want to use um, your own SKU, really. Because if someone's got that SKU and searches the internet, they may also find the product. So again, this comes down back to your structure. Are you, are you searching for brands versus non-brands? Now, if you go non-brand, you could still use the, the barcode and you can test it both ways using the barcode so you're picking up some um, branded traffic but also you're not uh, branding it as that so the non-branded stuff won't know the barcode they won't be able to find it then the simple point is like adding your price charging tax on the product and then at the last point is very similar to the title and the body is your search engine listing you know, so again, your page title, your URL handle, the meta description, you want to have similar information in there. The meta description, you maybe want to class it for the brand or a collection or talk. So for instance, it's a sofa, you might want to repeat various things about the sofa and you put this across all your sofas, or you may want to talk about the brand. But again, this, in, this part in here helps you uh, to improve in the search engines part. And then the URL handle is also important. Most of the time, URL handle is going to be the same as the page title, but you could change that slightly. For instance, in the page title, if you didn't have the brand name, but you wanted the brand name in the URL title or something like that. Um, so the, the page title, the URL handle, and then the actual main title, they're all very important parts, especially when it comes to the SEO optimization. And again, that's going back to your whole structure that we spoke about earlier, thinking how the website flows from the website to which collection to which product, uh, you know, is, are you going, how you're going to uh, navigate through that. And then that comes back to the collection side, which is very similar to adding a product. You've got a title, description, and that's also important. You've got the option to add a description in there, which again, you're thinking about SEO benefits, how you write that, words that you put in there to boost you in the rankings. And then a title description for the page title, for the meta description, the URL handle. Again, going back to the product, this is in, it works in the same way. So you want a good URL handle that benefits you there for SEO, a good meta description, and a good page title. Um, and then you can also, within the actual collections, have it that it's automatic or you manually add them into each single product. It depends on the volume of products you've got. A lot of the times we do it manually, so we've got more control over it in case something doesn't get added automatically. But then there's other collections that we do do automatically. So it depends on the, the reason that we're setting those collections up, basically. And then once you've got all that together, you then basically put it all together in the navigation. So you'll go into your navigation section, your menu, link to the collections, um, and, and then put it all there, basically. We're not going to get into that too much detail because it's very self-explanatory. But if you, have, if you are struggling with that, we can make a video about it or give more information. And then that's really it for this particular video. So let's give you a quick insight in terms to setting up your Shopify adding products, adding collections. That's what's going to take most of your time, especially adding products. You know, you got, you, we didn't cover adding images within the products and then alt text, but we will put that on another video. Um, but that gives you a good insight. 
if you are needing further support then have a look on our website which we mentioned before we've got the one-to-one -one mentoring and um, we have had a lot of people of interest in it and we've had more people sign up this week and last week we do have an offer on to the end of this month but probably we may finish that offer sooner depending on how many people sign up because it was just an offer to get people up signed up initially and um, but it definitely won't go past march so if you get any questions leave them in the comments below subscribe share like the video and hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Bye.